Welcome back. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In this video here, I'm going to talk about other ways to describe concentration besides uh, patented molarity. Uh, again, molarity is still the basically the unit of choice for professional chemists, uh, but there are some other times you want to talk about per, uh, concentrations in another unit besides molarity. So we're going to take a look at three different ways to describe concentrations in this video. One of them will be mole fraction. Mole fraction is just how many moles of whatever you're talking about divided by the moles of everything. So it's just a fraction of moles of A divided by moles of A plus everything else. Mass percent, this one is uh, primarily used for consumers. It basically tells people what percentage of the material is actually the thing you're buying. So whenever you buy something at the store, you're gonna find labels having generally mass percents. Like you go buy some fertilizer, it's gonna have like a percentage on there saying, hey, it's 10% phosphorus or 15% nitrogen or something. Your toothpaste will have a percentage on there saying, hey, my toothpaste is 0.243% active uh, sodium fluoride. All right, so, and then molality sounds a lot like molarity. It's not the same thing. Molarity is you, usually used much more often than molality, but we're still gonna talk about it. Molality is moles divided by kilograms of solvent. The really only place to use this is usually with colligative properties uh, or whenever you have some solution where like the volume might change. Um, so again, as long as you're dealing with like keeping the temperature about the same and as long as your concentration isn't too high, molar uh, molarity is pretty much gonna be used. But if you have a situation ever where your volume might be changing, then the molarity would change as the volume changes, then you might be tempted to use molality. But anyway, these are just three other ways we could talk about concentrations. Uh, this video does not talk about parts per million, which is another way, but we're gonna focus on these three here. So I'm gonna talk about these three using some sample questions. So, all right, so question. Calculate the mole fraction of the solute. So 240 grams of ammonium nitrate and 126 grams of water. A mixture used to make instant ice pack. So again, uh, basically a cold pack, the way it works sometimes is they take uh, salt and they dissolve it in some water and the temperature drops as it dissolves it endothermically. So to turn this into a mole fraction, we have to turn these grams that were given into moles and then just take the moles divided by the mol total moles. So we're gonna turn both those things into moles, divide the moles of the solute, which is the ammonium nitrate, by the moles of the solute and solvent. So because you're in GC Chem, you know you're polyatomic. So ammonium is NH4 plus, nitrate is NO3. So we have 204 grams of that. The molar mass of this is 80. That's just adding up the two nitrogens, the four hydrogens, and the three oxygens by mass. We get three moles of ammonium nitrate. 126 grams of water divided by 18, which is the molar mass for water. That gets to seven moles of water. To turn this into a mole fraction, we're gonna take the three moles of ammonium nitrate divided by the total moles, which is the moles of nit ammonium nitrate and the moles of water. So three plus seven is 10. Now it says mole fraction, it's three tenths. Of course on your, uh, on canvas, you'll need to plug it in as a decimal actually because you can't put a fraction in. So our answer here is 0.3. Now the question here for us, chloric acid is still uh, sold in stock bulk, 90% chloric acid. So it's pretty concentrated. Uh, generally, I buy stuff in bulk too in high concentrations, then I just dilute it down to a safe concentration for the labs. So what is the mole fraction of the chloric acid? Assuming the rest is water. And so again, we're gonna answer the decimal. So we're gonna use another equation to go with this, which is the mass percent. So we're not given a mass or volume, but don't worry, we can choose our own mass that we want. And we'll choose for convenient some number that's easy to multiply by. So I won't have to use my calculator for a few steps. Now, I you know most of you guys will still use it anyway because that's what you do. So that's okay. So anyway, I chose 100 grams. You could have chosen 1,000 grams. You could have chosen 10,000 grams. You could choose a bazillion grams. It doesn't matter as long as you just find out how many grams of everything you have. So choosing 100 grams, we would say, okay, well, 90% of this is chloric acid. So 90% equals, we're looking for grams of chloric acid. We chose grams of everything to be 100. That'd be 90 grams. So again, 90% solution. If it's 100 grams, 90 grams, that'd be chloric acid. The rest is water. So 100 grams total minus the 90 for the chloric acid, 10 grams of water. We're going to turn both these into moles so we can find the mole fraction. So 90 grams of chloric acid divided by the molar mass. Again, we have one, hydrogen's one, chlorine's 35. We have three oxygens each at uh, 16. That makes 84. 
we have this many moles of, of chloric acid. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have 10 grams of water divided by its molar mass, that many moles of water, this many moles of chloric acid divided by the total added together. Again, the bottom numbers will be the total moles of everything. And that is our mole fraction right there in decimal form. So, all right, another question, which is going to deal with the titration. So again, dealing with mass percents. This is often how we actually figure out the percentage of things. You know, we can do a titration to find out what's actually inside of this. So if you were working for the FDA and you wanted to make sure that some vinegar was the proper concentration, you might titrate it with a standardized base to find out if it actually has the right concentration. So titration is done to see the mass percent of, oh, not acetic acid, sorry, I changed that. Hydrofluoric acid. In a solution, in the titration, we have this many liters of sodium hydroxide being used with this molarity to neutralize some hydrofluoric acid solution, which has a mass of 200 grams. We want to know the mass percent of the hydrofluoric acid. So, going back, titration is basically this way to neutralize the moles of the acid equals moles of the base in a stoichiometric ratio. They'd be one to one if it was one H for every one OH. It may not always be that, so keep an eye on the homework assignment. So, if I use like calcium hydroxide with HF, the calcium hydroxide has two OHs, and so each one calcium hydroxide can neutralize two HFs. In this, in this one here, it's just one to one. So we're gonna solve for the moles of the acid by actually solving for the moles of base used, because at the equivalence point, at the place where we neutralize it, they're gonna be the same. So we can find the moles of the base by just taking the molarity times the volume, that gets moles of base, that'll equal the moles of acid because they're reacting one to one stoichiometrically. So 0.5 is our molarity from the sodium hydroxide given to us. Our volume is 0.1 liters. We have this many moles of base, which means that we also had this many moles of hydrofluoric acid. We can turn those moles into grams by multiplying the molar mass. Molar mass of hydrofluoric acid is 20, so we have one gram HF. To find this in terms of the mass percent, we have one gram divided by 200 times 100% to turn into percent form, and this is 0.5%. So we would say this solution here, our titration determined that the HF was 0.5% of the solution. All right, and the lesser known formula, molality. Uh, molality, again, is moles divided by kilograms of solvent. So again, not to be accused of molarity, because molarity is moles per liter, molality is moles per kilogram of solvent. This is the only one here that doesn't go by everything too. Like on the mass percent, everything's like total mass on the bottom. For the uh, mole fraction, all the moles are on the bottom. Here it's just actually the solvent. So calculate the molality. We have 150 grams formaldehyde and 500 grams of water. So you might do this kind of calculation if you're like preparing some animals for being dissected. So you know every time you buy some animals that are gonna be dissected for biology class, they smell. It's probably formaldehyde in large quantities, all right? So anyway, we're gonna turn those grams of formaldehyde into moles because molality is moles divided by kilograms. We gotta turn the solvent into kilograms and then we can just divide. So 150 grams of formaldehyde, molar mass is 30 because we have one carbon for 12, two hydrogens for two, and then oxygen 16. We have five moles. Turn the 500 grams of water into kilograms, what I'm by about 1,000, 0.5 kilograms, five moles and 0.5 kilograms. That is 10 molality solution. All right, God's peace, have a great day.